one thing that chaps my butt and everybody else uh, that's listening in, you probably had these times in your life where you do something amazing or you do something good and then your family and friends or anybody, they just narrow it down to, oh, you were lucky. Oh, you're blessed. And they don't seem to give you credit or you feel like they don't seem to give you credit for the work that you put in when nobody was looking. In today's video, uh, it's this one of the rare times where this was a topic that we talked about last night in our financial class that we have, just a private session. But it can carry over to this video. And the topic is luck. When people say luck or you're blessed because you achieved something phenomenal, even when you see that basketball player or Damian Dillard uh, when he was in the uh, – NBA playoffs and he shot the he just dribbled the ball, waited for it to uh go down to the last second and just sidestep Paul George and shot like a 50 footer or 45 footer to end the game. And everybody says luck. And the only thing he said was, I practice that shot every day. And the thing that people call luck or the thing that people call blessed, I say is opportunity meets preparation. When opportunity meets preparation, then you're lucky. But the key word is preparation. With all that being said, Alex, welcome back. I'm saying welcome back like, like you ain't <laughs> always here, but welcome back. And uh, and today, we, me and Alex is going to talk about, you know, two different, two or three different scenarios in our life where somebody said, you know, we was lucky. And trying to break down was it just luck involved that they believe, or was it opportunity meeting preparation? So we're just going to go back and forth. Alex, you give me one scenario in your life where, you know, family, friends, or whatever said, oh, he was lucky. And then we'll go back and forth and share our thoughts, tidbits, and anecdotes with that. Uh, for anybody that, that would, please like and subscribe to the channel, and let's get into it. Alex, you're up. Yeah, um, I know one scenario where... Um... A friend of mine uh, from work had told me that I was uh, privileged, is the word he said. And um, and it has nothing to do with race or nothing. We were, we're the same color. But he said I was privileged and because of my age for knowing and having what I have and know. And that, I think that, like, because I've been told I, I, I'm lucky I, I don't like hearing that either. Blessed is like, okay, I can see, you know, I'm blessed maybe, but, you know, it, it all comes from the work that you put in, not from, you know, it just spontaneously happened. Like, it's not like I just like woke up and, you know, I just had two rental properties and like, it doesn't like happen like that. And the people, um, in your circle or your bubble or whatever around you may they they don't see the work you do put in um i mean like i know for like let's say for my mom i hear it a lot from my mom she just says like you and kirby just go online and press buttons and make money <laughs> so you know like that that one just that always cracks me up but like uh, you know people they don't the average person, they're not doing the same thing someone who really, really badly wants success is doing. They're, um, you know, once they finish work, they go home and they're off. They're done. They're, um, it, that's it. Whereas me, um, for one, the job I have consists of being on call. So I'm, I'm not only on call with work, but with anything, I'm always available and constantly i guess working a lot around the clock and not really taking breaks uh has resulted in what i have or what i've accomplished i'll leave it open. right yeah and and for me all right so one time in my life where i heard the word lucky it's always after way after the fact it's not it's not um while i'm doing it so give you an instance um in 2016, that's when I really 
dove into real estate 2016, 2015 when I dove into real estate. Well, we, you could push it back a couple of years, yeah, somewhere around there. I can't remember, but anyway, and I bought this condo for fifty thousand dollars. When I bought it, at the time I bought it, I didn't hear nothing. You know, crickets, people saying, oh, the economy is going bad. Then you fast forward a couple of years, and then that same condo is worth 200000 And then people come, and I say, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I bought a condo for two. I mean, for 50000 Now it's worth 200000 Uh, I didn't grew the rents by, you know, 100x percent. And then they say, you're lucky. What is, and... Luke is when opportunity meets preparation. So was that condo going to be $50,000 for sale to somebody? Yeah, that number was not going to change. But if I never had the money to buy the condo, then I wouldn't have been in a position to reap the benefit of the appreciation of the house. So my preparation of having capital and Busting my butt and saving my money instead of going and blow it at the club, going to theme parks, because, you know, we're in Florida, so Disney World and all that. Uh, buying the latest, greatest car, buying the latest, biggest house. So if I, I didn't get pulled into that direction to do that, so it gave me the ability to have the capital to. So my preparation, accumulating the capital, opportunity came by. Even if I had the money or not, that condo was going to be on sale for $50,000. So the opportunity met my preparation. That's how we got there. But if I didn't prepare and had the money, the condo would have been $50,000. I'm like, oh, man, I wish I could get that condo. So, was, so that's what I mean by opportunity meets preparation. That is what luck is. If you don't prepare to receive it, you don't get to do it. But I'll give you your... You'll run at it, and then I'll come back with one with, about blessed. But go ahead. So is there one another scenario you have where you somebody called you lucky or blessed? Yeah, I mean, it's it's often heard, honestly. Um, you know, I hear it a lot from just people that um, that aren't trying their hardest, honestly. Uh, and so it's like, it, it's not like down to a specific person. The, the one that I would specify is that one, that's the only person that's called me privileged, and that that one I really did not like because it was like, how am I privileged when, you know, I'm working harder than everyone else my age? Like, it, it's not my fault that they decided, they decided to slack off. So, but as far as being called lucky and stuff, I hear that a lot. Um, blessed and, you know, it's just it. But really, like people, they they really don't understand. Um the hours of work you put in i mean for example like this podcast we decided to come on and do this podcast at eight in the morning kirby was still sending me shorts to react to at like two three in the morning you know most people got to get their beauty oh. sleep and, everything. Yeah. So, and yeah. i need mine i'm looking like a hot mess right now but yeah show sure us but but that's that's the thing is you know people they they really want time off they don't want to they want breaks they don't want to stress about it and I was thinking about this the uh yesterday was like I was like when was the last time I had a break like an actual break and I, I don't know I might have a break from work but then I'm still doing something else as far as with this channel or uh with real estate or stocks or whatever it's always and it's like because I have programmed myself to it's not like I feel like oh I have to work it's like no this is my life. This is what I want to do. And once you create a lifestyle out of that, you, you're you outpacing everyone around you. And that's just because that's your choice. You decided to work or create your life become, you know, it's a lifestyle to work or progress towards something. And if people, people always say, you mean, you would hear this, you know, people that is not in the game, Oh, you play the stock market. Oh, you play the real estate game. Uh, oh, when all right, so all right, so you you're over here doing this. When do you go back to doing normal stuff? I always say, this is not a switch I turn on and off. When the camera's on, I don't be like, oh, this is the guy I am. And then when the camera's off, I'm like, 
Oh no, I put my hand hand in my pants like Al Bunny from Married with Children, sit back with a beer and nothing wrong with beer, but sit back with a beer and watch TV and let the kids drive me crazy. No, this is a way of life. Eat, sleep, wake up, go to bed. The little while time we do go to bed, this is our way of life. Every day, all day. But they think everybody who, oh, they, they want to, you know, be on vacation. Think of the, they think it's an on and off switch. Oh, okay, now I got to be financially focused now. And then, all right, I'm done with that. Cut off that switch. Let's go back and party and turn up. Then I go cut on the switch of financial focus. No, financially focused all the time. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going out and, you know, restaurants and, you know, having fun, enjoying your leisure time. But you always looking for opportunities. But the only way you can look for opportunities, if you, you can look, but only way you can take advantage of opportunities if you prepare to take advantage of them. Like we talk about all the time and I'm getting off subject. So let me get back to the other one. So bless, bless. I'm about to keep, I'm about to, we're about to go down the tunnel here. But, uh, but bless. Always hear, like when people ask, you know, what stuff I'm involved in and things like that. And again, like you said, it's always the people that's not in the financial realm. The people that, you know, in the, you know, entrepreneurs that's in the financial realm, they say, hey, man, you're working hard. Congratulations. Keep pushing. The people that know, knows. But the people that's lazy and don't want to do nothing or waiting for that lottery ticket to come, oh, you're blessed. And now, don't shoot me, you know, Bible theologians and things like that. But I don't take offense to ever being called blessed. But I take offense when somebody gives an excuse for why I have what I have. Because, now correct me if I'm wrong, the Bible say, sow a seed to reap a harvest, Right? It didn't say go sit on the couch or go sit in the field and the harvest is going to blossom for you for doing nothing. So the preparation was sowing the seed. The opportunity was it was, you know, a great rainfall, great sunlight and a mass harvest bloom. But opportunity meets preparation. But they, everybody, I'm not going to say everybody, the people in the know will give you the support that you're looking for and recognize, game recognize game. They know what you had to do to get there. But everybody else wants to give an excuse on why you have it. And it's really not you. It's an excuse to them so they can keep being a dirtbag. So, oh, you got lucky. So if he was lucky, well, I can't worry about that. I can't have that because I, I ain't never that lucky. Or he blessed. Oh, I can't worry about that because I'm never that blessed. But that's what it is. When people are telling you, oh, oh, you're so blessed. No, they, they really, they really throw a shade at you or give an excuse for themselves. But the Bible says, sow a seed, reap a harvest. It didn't say think about a seed and the next thing you know, the, the harvest is gonna be plentiful, grain everywhere, bread, pasta, everybody just eating, eating off, off of somebody doing nothing. But People only selective on what parts of the Bible. And I'm not no theologian, so if if you're in one of those faiths that, you know, throw Bibles at people for saying something out of context, please just comment and correct me in the context if I said it wrong, but I think I'm on point there. Well, thanks everybody for tuning into the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Comment in the comment section below. And please don't be mad at me because if I offended you with something I said about the Bible. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.